Thanks, Greg. Uh, you had you had mentioned your wife. I can, hi, Sherry. I tell you a little bit about mine. I, I told my wife where I had to be tonight. I had to come here and had to deliver a little speech. So she says to me, she says, whatever you do, don't try to be too charming. Don't try to be too witty. Don't try to be too intellectual. She says to me, just be yourself. And I'm thinking, I'm not quite sure how to take that, but but thanks, honey. Uh, you know, if you've been at the last few annual meetings that I've talked to, you know, I like to start it out with a fairly poorly uh, given joke, so I got one here for you. So there's a guy, he's, he's floating around in a hot air balloon, and he realizes he's lost. So he brings the altitude down a little bit, and he sees a guy in a field, so he brings her down a little bit farther, and he says, hey, you know, can you tell me where I am? The guy looks up at him, he says, yeah, you're in a hot air balloon about 30 feet above the ground. He looks down at him, well, you must be an engineer. Well, I, I am, but how'd you know that? He's like, well, what you told me is, is technically correct, but it's of no use to anybody. <laughs> so the engineer looks back up at him, he's like, well, you must be in management. <laughs> well, I am, but you know, how'd you know that? So he says, well, you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're going, but yet you expect me to help you. And he says, you're in the same position you were before we met, but now it's my fault. <laughs> okay, I'll get back to my day job here. Is there a clicker? All right, I'm going to touch on our, our financial audit for 2014 a little bit. Uh, the board of directors contracted with Brady Martz and Associates, uh, independent accounting firm out of Grand Forks, North Dakota. Uh, that's the sixth consecutive year we've used them. Uh, we're one of about 20 electric distribution cooperatives that, that they audit throughout Minnesota and the Dakotas. Uh, the 2014 audit was conducted with what they call in the business as generally accepted auditing standards. Uh, pleased to announce that, that uh, Brady Martz issued a clean opinion of our accounting controls for 2014. Our audit also indicated that, that Lake Country Power is in full compliance with the requirements that are set forth by our, our majority lender, which is the federal government's rural utility service. Uh, for any members that want a copy of our audit report, uh, if you're insomniacs or you need, need some good bedtime reading, we'd be happy to get you one. Uh, I'd prefer to email it to you. Uh, I realize not everybody has email, but if you could track down any one of our employees, they can get your information. Uh, then they can get that back to me and we'd be happy to either email you one or mail you one. Uh, as many of you know, we, we publish our monthly financial results in our, on our website and in our, our monthly uh, newsletter. It's called Newsline. Uh, we also print it in our annual report. That annual report was mailed out in your electric bills this past month. Uh, we've also included that annual report in your registration bags. Uh, in addition to the audit, I'm going to touch on a few financial points from 2014, and then I'll give it back over to Dale. Uh, as, as Greg mentioned, we continue to replace our distribution plant and invest in our system infrastructure. Our balance sheet shows just short of $278 million in assets, and those assets are spread over a service territory of, of about 11,000 square miles. Uh, a few examples of what we got out there are substations. Uh, we've got 45 substations in total, uh, distribution lines totaling over 8,200 miles, uh, about 66,000 meters, a fleet of more than 100 vehicles, 46,000 transformers, and eight buildings that house our roughly 130 employees. From an expense side, uh, the cost of wholesale power accounts for roughly 55% of our total budget in any given year. That means that more than half of our costs go to Great River Energy that, for the power that we purchase from them on your behalf. Well, we're the distribution end of the business. We own the substations and the distribution infrastructure to get it to your house. We and thus you are part owner of Great River Energy. They own the generation and the transmission side. So they own the big power plants and the big transmission lines. They get the kilowatts to the, to the substation. We take it over from there to get it to your house. Uh, the remainder of our costs outside of that, what we'd consider our local costs, the maintenance of our distribution system is roughly 15% of that cost, and the interest and depreciation of our distribution system combined are about 17% of our cost. So those are the largest components of our cost structure. Uh, even though we are a, a not-for-profit electric co-op, uh, we are required by the RUS. Uh, if some of you have been around a while, and uh, looking around, I'd say several of you have, uh, you may remember it as the, the REA. Uh, that's the RUS now. 
they require us to, to maintain a margin. And they do that so they can ensure that, that we're able to, to continue to invest and operate a safe and reliable electric system. This means that our utility plant investments continue to grow to meet members' reliability expectations. The downside to, to doing all the investing in our, in our distribution plan is that we continue to see increases in our, in our interest and depreciation costs related to those plant investments. Uh, those two components are roughly $15 million coming into 2015. That's an annual number. Uh, last year we saw an increase of about $3.4 million in wholesale power cost. Uh, we did purchase about 27 million more kilowatt hours in 2014 than we did in 2013. Most of that can be directly attributed to weather. We don't have a whole lot of growth on our system. We don't have you know, new homes being constructed. We don't have any large loads coming in that would, that would cause us some growth. So what we've got, that was strictly weather related. If you remember last year, you know, we had a, a winter that drug on even into May and a spring that was either short or what felt like non-existent. Went from winter right to summer last year. Well, our, that increase in our sales from 13 to 14 Almost all of that was in our energy-wise programs, like our off-peak and our dual fuel heating programs. I'm sure you remember from last year's annual meeting when I reported that we received approval from, from the RUS to, to defer $2 million of revenue from 2013 into 2014. What that was for was that was to, to uh, we had some, we had, had uh, budgeted for, I think it was $3.5 million of right-of-way spending that we didn't get completed in 2013. However, we collected that money in rates because we had planned to get that completed. So we had revenue in excess of what our expenses were for that particular particular line item. So what we did was we asked the RUS, you know what, we'd like to take this two million that we didn't get done in expenses, move that revenue into 2014, so that in 2014 we can get caught up on our right of way clearing. So they provided approval for us to do that. And it allows us to complete that work without having a real significant impact on rates or on our margins. But however, one thing to look at, if you're looking at financial statements from 2013 to 2014, what it created was you'll see, you know, $2 million, there's an extra $2 million, of, it appears an extra $2 million of revenue in 2014 that in excess of what was actual. 2013 revenues appeared $2 million less than what was actual. So if you're looking at it, it appears like there's a, you know, $4 million increase in revenue, and that wasn't necessarily the case. I see the flip side of that on the expense side. You'll see a, a $4 million swing in our oper operations and maintenance expenses strictly related to our right-of-way spending. But the revenue deferral was moving the revenue to cover that, that increase in expenses from year to year. So it washes out if you're looking at the two years in total. But it look a little funky if you're looking one year to the next. What that also means is in 2014, we cleared more miles of, of trees and brush from under our power lines than we ever have in any single given year. Greg touched on it a bit uh, related to our cost of service study and uh, the rate outlook for the rest of 2015. A uh, little more detail on that. We're anticipating that needing roughly $2 million in extra revenue to account for expense increases since our last rate change in 2012. I know $2 million might sound like a lot, but if you're looking at, at Lake Country Power, we have a roughly $90 million top line revenue, so $2 million is not a real large percentage of that. It's something consistent with, you know, cost of living type increases. As we look ahead, uh, we will continue to hold costs down and, and manage your resources wisely without compromising on our mission to deliver safe, reliable, and affordable electric service. I'm going to touch on a couple things before I'm done. Uh, one of them being Smart Hub. I don't know if you saw it, there's a booth in the back where we're talking about Smart Hub. Well, Smart Hub is a technology that allows you on either your phone or your tablet or a computer to view or pay your bill, check your payment history, uh, view your usage. Uh, well, now we're pleased to announce that through that, that technology, you can now report outages through Smart Hub. So you could report an outage or check the status of an outage on your smartphone or tablet or from your computer. Stop back there if you're interested in that. Barb, Barb or Ann or even Dennis back there can give you some more information if you want to download that app. They can tell you where to find it and how to get signed up for it. Last thing I want to touch on, you know, talking about smartphones, and as people get, get more and more away from landline phones and get more towards mobile phones, uh, it's important that you keep us updated on your phone number. Uh, when you're calling in an outage, we use that phone number. If we have it tied to your account, we'll use that phone number to tie the outage to your service location. Uh, if we know that number and that number calls us, we know where the outage is. We can do that through our automated system without, having, without you having to talk to somebody 
or waiting on hold to get a hold of somebody trying to call in an outage. Now I'll close with, uh, it's somebody once tell me that a good speech should be like a comet. Dazzling, eye-opening, and over before you know it. So Mr. Chair, that concludes my report.